Tomorrow marks two years since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, and both sides appear determined to fight on. The UK Defense Ministry says Russia is intensifying its attacks across several points on the front lines after taking control of a key city. The offensive comes as Ukraine is facing a potentially catastrophic shortage of air defenses and ammunition. After holding off Russia's initial assault on the capital of Kyiv, Ukraine's counteroffensive did lead to some gains, but ultimately it failed to cut off Russia's land bridge to southern Ukraine, and now U.S. officials are painting a dire picture if Congress fails to pass additional funding for Ukraine's fight. We have full coverage of the war in Ukraine as we mark these two years since Russia's invasion. Our foreign correspondent James Longman has the latest. Ukrainian commanders with a stark warning. Russia is on the brink of a major offensive on multiple fronts across the east. Bombing Kramatorsk following their takeover of the town of Adivka, regaining ground lost in Ukraine's counteroffensive last summer. Russian President Vladimir Putin with his top general surveying the territory won back, congratulating the troops and urging them on. Almost two years into this war, Ukraine says it's outmanned and outgunned. Digging trenches as the Russians close in, military aid on hold, blocked by Republicans in the U.S. House. And with new U.S. sanctions looming after the death of Putin's fiercest critic, Alexei Navalny, Russian authorities have now detained a dual U.S.-Russian citizen. They released this video, reportedly showing 33-year-old ballerina Kesnia Karolina, who lives and works in Los Angeles, with a hat covering her eyes and handcuffed, ready to appear in court. She's been charged with treason. Russian authorities claim she donated about $50 to a Ukrainian charity in the United States. Karolina was part of the Baltimore Ballet in 2017, her former mother-in-law says she was arrested while visiting family in Russia. If we don't help her, we can say goodbye to her. If we do not protect her as an American citizen, nobody else will. Hey, and that's our James Longman reporting. James, thank you very much. So now for more on this, we want to bring in ABC's Patrick Riebel, who's in Kyiv, along with ABC News National Security and Defense Analyst Mick Mulroy. For more on this, thank you both for being here. Patrick, we'll start with you tomorrow, marking those two years since Russia's war in Ukraine started. So what's the latest on the fighting? Hi, Trevor. Yeah, I mean, as we heard, Russia is on the offensive at multiple points in the front line since they took the key eastern city of Avdivka um, at last weekend. They're pushing now in multiple points, um, focused on the south, trying to regain some of the territory that uh, the Ukrainian counteroffensive last summer managed to take, trying to reverse those very minor gains that they made down in the south. They're also pushing up in the northeast with a very large offensive there. It's estimated that around 50,000 Russian troops are trying to push forward towards the city of Kupyansk. And basically, we are seeing pressure along multiple fronts as, you, as Russia is trying to take advantage of the shortages in ammunition that are now starting to really bite here as a result of that holdup on a more American aid. And we are really starting to see a very difficult situation here and hearing more and more dire warnings. I mean, every soldier that we speak to speaks about severe artillery problems. I mean, I spoke just a few minutes ago to a soldier who who was in Avdivka and who fled, this, uh, who retreated in, from the city, um, he said that there was, uh, they were not able to fire regularly during the battle and they were only able to start using he artillery heavily as they retreated to try and cover this retreat. He said that if they'd been able to use as much artillery as they wanted, they would still be there now, they would still hold that city. Trevor? President Biden has, has, of course, been calling for more funding. He does need the help of Congress to do that. He did, however, this morning, just a little bit ago, uh, unveil some new sanctions on Russia. Uh, so, Mick, this is targeting the country's financial sector, the defense industrial base, uh, the procurement networks. But obviously, this is not the first time that they've announced some sanctions on Russia. How effective have prior sanctions been? And do we think these new ones might make any kind of new impact? So, Trevor, uh, you can, can't expect Russia to change its activities based on sanctions, and they do take a long time to work, but it does have an effect. It obviously has consequences. So it, these are focused like, focused, like you said, on their defense sector, sec, sector and their ability to create war. So their ability to get the technology they need to, for the advanced weapon systems they're using in Ukraine, they're very important to do. 500 new sanctions will have an effect. It will not stop them, but it will have an effect. Will have an effect will be Congress approving the much needed aid that the Ukrainians need to continue their fight. As Patrick mentioned, they are essentially running out of ammunition in a fight and they cannot hold their ground. That needs to change. There needs to be a passage of this 
critical security assistance to the Ukrainians as soon as possible. And Patrick, I mean, you touched on how already you're seeing the difference in the Ukrainians' ability to fight as the funding is drying up. If they don't get a bill passed, what are we going to be looking at in terms of Ukraine's ability to fight back against Russia? Yeah, I mean, I think already the delay in the supply of ammunition and of more weapons is showing here on the battlefield. We're seeing the Ukrainians basically have to ration ammunition. They were already having to ration ammunition back in November. So obviously the situation has become much, much more critical now. And we heard from U um, some U.S. officials just this week saying that they predict there could be a catastrophic shortage of ammunition by late March, which is certainly seems to align with similar things we are hearing from Ukrainian troops on the ground. The, the, the shortages here are really biting and it is starting to show on the battlefield. And Mick, just more broadly with these new sanctions and with the push for funding, what do you think are going to be the key issues moving forward as this war progresses? So I think the really key issues is not only the funding, which is has to happen, or they could start losing significant ground and give the Russians that feeling that they can win this. The other thing that has to happen is this uh, critical weapon systems that the Ukrainian need to actually continue this counteroffensive, which is the F-16, a fighter attack jet that can do close uh, combat. They need more main battle tanks like the Abrams. They need long-range artillery like the Attackums. These things are absolutely critical, not only to hold ground, but to actually start gaining ground against the Russians, potentially cut them off from Crimea and turn this thing around. I think that would be exceptionally helpful to, to show Russia that they are never going to win this. If we do not do that, they are going to believe that they can, and it's going to send a message not only to our allies, uh, but our adversaries like China, that they might not be able to, uh, that Taiwan might not be able to count on the United States in their potential uh, conquest of Taiwan. So it's really important that we send this message for multiple reasons. Yeah, or at the very least could send the message that the U.S. will only support people for so long. So that's ABC News National Security and Defense Analyst Mick Mulroy and Patrick Rebel reporting for us on the ground in Kiev, Ukraine. Ukraine, thank you very much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.